Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 425 for Friday, February 17th, 2023. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to, welcome back to Business Brain. Welcome to the family here. We're the show where we take a topic or a concept, we filter it through, apply our business brains to it so that we can learn and dissect more and get more out of it. Sponsors for this episode include HelloFresh. We can go to HelloFresh.com slash BusinessBrain65. Use code BusinessBrain65. Why? To take 65% off your first box. We'll talk more in depth about how that works and why you're going to want to do it a little bit later here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I don't know why that's important, but I just follow your lead. Yeah, uh, I don't know why it's important <laughs> and, either. And share my my location every week, just in case anybody wants to know. I'm yeah. still here in Lafayette, California. There you Shannon go. Jean. There you Happy go. Happy to be here. Hey, so I was in Stamford, Connecticut, the day that okay. I learned the meaning of the word curtailed. Oh. Ah. Uh, okay. I was I was taking for a variety of reasons, which I, I'm happy to go into, but it would detract from this story because it would take too long. Uh, I was taking a, a semester off from college. I actually did go back a- after some of this, and now I'm on yet another break from college, but that's uh, that's yet another story. <laughs> but uh, I got a, a gig as a, um, a contract worker working for Citibank. I've worked for Citibank two different times, two different divisions in my life. This was the first time. A friend okay. of mine had the gig as like a summer job, and then uh, he went back to school. I was not going back to school. He was like, dude, they want somebody. This is you. I was doing a lot of, essentially, I was a, a in today's world, we would describe what I was doing as, as a, like the, the role of an executive assistant, like, you know, uh, it, it, to, to use colloquial terms, a secretary. Yeah. Really what I was, in, in, at the time though, I was one of the few people on the planet that understood how to use like desktop publishing software and and create like spreadsheets and forms and all those things because I was a computer nerd. So yeah, it was yeah, so my my skills were much valued in a different way than those same skills would be today just cuz th- there were they were fairly rare uh at the time. And so I was doing some tech support for the department and and some uh you know, a lot of like like presentation creation and things like that. Uh but it was a great gig uh and all of that they paid me really well. I think at the time I was making like 14 bucks an hour, which at the time was just like, you know, triple the minimum wage or something. It was great. You know, I got to work in an office. They brought lunch in every That's day, awesome. all this good stuff. Yeah. Well, it was awesome until they started having budget cuts about two and a half months into my, uh, my stint there. And I was the first one to see this memo that I then had to sort of distribute to the five kind of managers on my team. And it talked about how the services of a of all uh, external contractors were going to be curtailed. And I did oh. not know what the word curtailed meant, but I certainly knew that it applied to me because I was an external contractor. I was not an employee of Citibank. They were just paying me as a contractor. So I uh, I had to you know figure out what the word curtailed mean and and search engines were different back then than they are today. So it took a little bit of effort. But this is a very visceral memory because when I read what the definition meant, uh, I understood that it meant my job was ending and I didn't think there was anything anyone could do about this because, you know, the order came down from on high. And uh, my interpretation was was correct. There was nothing they could do. My my job did end about two weeks later, uh, maybe three weeks later, I forget. But um, but it was one of those things was one of those moments in life where. I realized even though all the people that I worked for who I thought controlled my fate, right? Like, you, you know, okay, like right. I, I was working for them. I liked working for them. I certainly liked the money that I was making. I was relying on that money as most people who earn money do. Uh, and I was, I was doing everything I could to make my bosses happy and all of those things. And, and they were super unhappy about the fact that my services were going to be curtailed. Uh, oh, okay. But that didn't change anything. My services were still curtailed. And, and that, that's a, I, I, that lesson sort of resurfaces in my, you know, subconscious into my conscious uh, mind pretty regularly 
because it, I think it's part of the reason that I wound up starting my own thing eventually. I mean, I didn't just go right out and start my own thing, but it was like, wow, like all the people that I interact with want one thing. And yet someone else who I don't know and cannot talk with decided yes. my fate, our fate, you, you know? And it was yeah. like, wow, this is, this is how this kind of thing works, isn't it? You know, it was a really eye opening experience and it wasn't necessarily a good one, but it certainly was defining. It was, it wasn't a good one in the moment. I think in, in retrospect, it probably served me really well because uh, it, it, put me in the mindset of wanting to be in charge of my own destiny. Um, now that doesn't, you know, you, you're in business for yourself. I always say that just means you have many employers, not one. Uh, you still have to keep all of the people that, that, uh, that, well, that you work for and that work for you, your clients and your employees, you have to keep everybody happy. Otherwise things fall apart. But, but at yeah, least you're, you're if, spreading out that, uh, that risk, right? Well, and you're in charge. You're spreading out the risk, yes. But you're also like I'm also in charge. If if I'm keeping everyone happy, chances are I'm gonna have business and work to do tomorrow and I'll be able to make money tomorrow, right? Like there yep. there is that. Like serving the customer is the point. Whereas in in that scenario at Citibank, it didn't it didn't matter that I served the customer beyond their expectations. Like I definitely way outdid the guy before me. And, and was just blowing everybody away. They were super happy with me. Changed nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I have lots to say about this. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sound means I get to tell you about our sponsor for this week, which is HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You get to skip those trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. And that's why we like it here at Business Brain, because it kind of combines all of those smart things. It makes things more efficient, makes things more affordable. HelloFresh now has 40 weekly recipes to choose from, so you can say bye-bye to your recipe rut and treat yourself and your family to exciting new flavors every week. This time around, Lisa and I chose to do their uh, pescatarian menu to see what that's like. One of the things on there is creamy shrimp and bacon spaghetti, salmon limon. But if you're not into that, you know, they've got like pork chops and apple rosemary pan sauce, zucchini and tomato flatbreads if you want to go the vegetarian route, fully loaded turkey taquitos. They've got great recipes and you can customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides or even adding a protein to a veggie dish it's so easy to make the instructions are super clear and it makes it fun because it instantly makes cooking collaborative which is perhaps my favorite part about using hellofresh for you go to hellofresh.com slash business brain 65 and use code business brain 65 for 65 percent off plus free shipping. Again, that's business brain 65 is the code to use at hellofresh.com slash business brain 65. We'll put all these links in the show notes at businessbrain.show as well. And our thanks to HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit for sponsoring this episode. While we're here, have you ever wanted to eavesdrop on a mastermind of successful online business owners? Find out what they talk about and how their unique mindset differs from their competition. You know, because you're interested in the business brain, you might be interested in checking out the Masterminding Success podcast. Every week, Keith Wheeler and Nuria Corby come together to openly discuss all aspects of success, both in business and in life. They cover topics from book publishing and affiliate marketing to how to make your business stand out in the marketplace and a whole lot more. So whether you're thinking about just starting an online business or you've been running one for years, Keith and Nuria will open your eyes to new and different ways to look at your customers and your business to better your chances of long-term business success with the Masterminding Success Podcast. Our thanks to Keith and Nuria for doing this swap with us. All right, so what do you have to say, Shannon? Yeah, <laughs> so this is this uh, paycheck fallacy that I've been really battling my whole life because there's this concept, and, and if we can impact you know, just even one person, 
with this podcast, with Business Brain. It's getting people to change their frame of that it's safer to work for someplace else. It's safer to and more reliable to work for a big corporation and all that kind of stuff. The, all you're doing is shifting the responsibility to someone else for your own everything. You yeah. know, your, your 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 own life, your outcome, the responsibility whether uh, you get you get uh, uh, promoted or not. If what someone else deciding some black box committee whether you get a raise or whether you get a bonus all that kind of stuff and that's that's great for some people yeah no it's However, a mindset thing right it it is. It, 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 it is it's not safer but it no. is more aligned with uh, the the type of person who wants that or or perhaps better said less aligned with the control freaks like me so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, this concept of many bosses, I really love. And yeah. we've talked about it before. Yeah. And uh, it's, you're spreading out th who pays you. you. You have all these people that are giving you checks, right? And yeah. if, if something happens, and it will, what goes wrong with one person or you drop the ball or someone, you know, if your employees drops the ball, you don't follow through and you get fired by one of those bosses. Well, you could have hundreds of, or thousands of other bosses that are going to pick up the slack. And that's the way to think that, wow, I'm going to go out on my own and I have, you know, without a net and this kind of thing, you know, stay at your current business and, and start a company, you know, or go part-time or figure out a way, you know, live off your spouse's money, uh, your, her income or him, his income, live well below your means while you're figuring this out. So you have, uh, more resources. I to recommend tap into. living well below your means at all times, <laughs> if possible. Yeah. If yes. possible, it, it. Some yeah. people like. I mean, there's some scenarios where I, you can't, and I I get that. I've certainly experienced that. I, I probably I I don't want to, but I probably will again someday. I I don't know, right? You know, well, like yeah. I, I think a a really great example of this. I've mentioned him on the show before. Is uh guy who practices this fire concept which is uh, financial independence retire early and it's mr money mustache uh, you can find him at mr money all right and he has this you know he talks a lot about this concept of you know becoming a millionaire by not spending you know and and saving your money for you know there's all kinds of different formulas but maybe yeah. 10 years but living on 40 percent of your income or something like uh. that but what that does, those concepts, they buy you freedom. Not, well, I shouldn't say freedom. Um, flexibility to go start something like this. Yes. And to eliminate uh, this, you know, we, we talked about be wearing the onces. You know, well, once I have this, I can start a business. Once I, <laughs> you know, do this. Once I learn this. One, no, no. You just got to go figure it out. You, you, chances are very good that whatever you think you're going to start is going to turn out different. But... As you grow something from a side hustle, perhaps into a business, you're just spreading out all that risk to all these different bosses. And there's not going to be some corporate, you know, wonk that's going to decide that, oh, it's time to curtail <laughs> all these yes. people. Yes. And you, you have no control. Um, so that framework, if we can push that, you know, and because and, it dramatically changed my life once yeah. I understood it. You know, as we're talking about this, I think there were two things that shocked me here. The one is that I, which I already shared that these people uh, that, you know, this came down from on high and, and it was like, well, holy crap. Like I, I have no control over this. The people around me have no control over this. The thing that also surprised me and perhaps more importantly, more meaningfully was how the the folks who were just in the corporate system, my my bosses there, if you will, just accepted this. Like no one said out of their control. Yeah, right. They well, yeah, but like one of them, like the head of our department, uh, theoretically could have pushed upward a little bit and said, "Hey, sure, yeah, you know, I know that that's uh, that that this is the thing, but." This like the department relies on this role being filled. We're currently filling it with a contractor, but maybe we should like put this out as a as a you know like maybe we should hire this person and and actually create this job in in the system instead of just 
sort of filling it haphazardly. They did not. And that part really shocked me. It was like, oh, what? They're not going to fight for me? Like, this is crazy. They're just going to take it. and They've been beat down, man. <laughs> and, and, and they're going to suffer because of this. Yeah. It's not like they're going to replace yeah. me. Like, this is, this is a very, uh, you know, like, they all relied on me. And and the guy before me, right? Like this this had been going on for six eight months, and they were like, "Yeah, well, well we just have to do do without." Like, what? Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, that's nuts. yeah that part you're used to it. They've been they've I been know. conditioned. They, their yeah. framework on the whole concept is that oh well, other people make these decisions, and that just means I have to kind of go along and figure things out. And you know that it. It's blows my mind yep. as an as an entrepreneur that that's acceptable because you know as entrepreneurs we've often uh, had to fight to figure out how to keep a certain key employee right or yes. keep a contract we're like okay well I mean there's been plenty of time in in my life where I'm like well you know what I'm going to make less money because this person needs to stay and in the long run I'll make more money but right now I'm going to lessen what I'm taking yes. out of the business to pay their salary. Not a single um, person, I guarantee you, and I don't fault these people for this. They were trained yes. this way, right? But not a single one of them thought, you know, if each of us, like there's five of them, so if each of us gives up $3 an hour, uh, we could keep this guy and make our lives yep. way better. But no, I mean, yes. I, I, I and, and I, again, I don't fault them, but no one thought that way. No, they don't think that way. No. Yeah. No. This is yeah. this is the this is the message right here yeah. that, that encapsulates the whole reason why I do this podcast is to get this mentality and this framework out there because you know yes lots of small businesses fail but you know tons of them succeed as yeah. well and I guarantee you you will fail at some things but oh. your the the journey is going to be so much more rewarding because at the end of the day when you're sitting there you're impacted by the decisions that you made, not someone else or some committee or this kind of thing. And uh, uh, I, I highly recommend it. Yeah, I yeah. Think it's, I think you'll you'll love the process. Let us know what you think about this uh, this framing. Uh, feedback at business brain dot show and if this conversation triggered something in you that, that that you remember like a moment you can point to in your life or in your career or whatever that that is was pivotal for you because this one definitely like it keeps coming up for me so i know that it helped define my outlook and and really set me or at least nudge me toward the path that i wound up taking if you have one of those moments, share it with us because we'd like to share it on the show too. Feedback at businessbrain.show. It's a lot of fun doing this. We love hearing from you. We love being able to do this with you. It's amazing. Keep living that charmed life and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>